Hello Scorpio and welcome to your October monthly forecast. This is for the Sun or the Ascendant. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honoured if you did so now. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. Briefly, before I begin, I'd like to tell you about my exciting Year 2021 special offer package. You can order now, get the rest of 2020 in terms of the forecast, free, all the 21, plus a character analysis, and 30% off. This is based on your time, date, and place of birth, so no two, two charts are the same. This really does ascend above your zodiac sign. It will give you so much more detail to steer your moves. But as for this month, as we come into it, well, the sun is in rather a quiet, sheltered location, your 12th solar house. But Mercury, the planet of communication, is actually in your sign, but it's in shadow. What does shadow mean? It means that there's going to be a retrograde which begins on the 14th. 2020 is unique in that the retrogrades that we're having of Mercury are all starting in water signs. Now next year, 2021, they all occur in air signs. Now this Mercury retrograde does actually see Mercury retreat into the sign of Libra, which is an air sign, on the 28th. But the shadow period is when Mercury's slowing down, preparing to slam on the brakes mid-month. So I would say to you, when it comes to your individual plans, you might factor into your approach and thinking that things might not go quite at the speed of light. That doesn't mean to say they can't progress, but if you know that there can be some uh, unforeseen niggles, it's just going to take off a little bit of frustration. Now also as you come into this month, Venus, the planet of love and attraction, is high in the sky in your 10th house. So there could be some negotiations that you're having, perhaps confidentially behind the scenes. But by the third, Venus moves into the sign of Virgo, which for you is very much to do with friendship. And she's going to be there through to the 27th. So I think the message of this month, initially anyway, is look out for sincere friendships, because they're the ones that are really going to inspire and lift you up. And even around your professional situation, someone could well put in a good word for you. But your traditional ruler in traditional astrology is Mars. In modern astrology, Pluto, the higher octave uh, co-ruler of your sign, that's very much to do with transformations. Mars is obviously very intense in your sign, and very passionate. Well, the two are in conflict for the first three weeks of this month. And when that happens, that can create quite a lot of tension. Pluto's in the part of your scope to do with your ideas, but also your interactions with neighbours, siblings, and your everyday world. Whereas Mars is in a more brittle location, the sixth solar house. Now that's great for working hard and being very focused, but it's a bit ego denying. And of course, Mars is about ego. Also, Mars is in retrograde. Uh, through this month, through till the 11th of November. So that's slowing down itself, particularly as far as your work situation or energy are concerned, may see you a little bit below uh, top par. Now, because these two are in a, in a right angle, it can create tension if you try to rush things because the angle between the third and the sixth house it's very much to do with your nervous system and your health. So it's going to be important to be, as I said at the outset, philosophical about the pace of development. So that doesn't mean to say you can't make progress, but I think a lot of it can be perhaps behind the scenes, planning, researching, taking soundings. There is a full moon on the first day of this month in that sixth solar house. And it is also going to be conjunct Chiron, the wounded healer. If there is anything to do with your welfare that you've been kind of putting off, it may be that just the isolation of COVID has been hard work, or perhaps there is a health appointment that's been cancelled because of the COVID scare. If you can reschedule it now, I would do so. This is not in any kind of alarmist way. It's actually using the planets to your advantage. 
Of course, Chiron is a comet, but it is very positive if we use it uh, well. So it's asking you to be organized about appointments and particularly to do with interviews if you are looking for a job. Now, uh, there is on the third that change of Venus moving into that more sociable area. But because the sun is marooned in that more reflective zone, how outgoing you're going to be, I don't know. I think it depends on your unique personal horoscope and what the placement of particular uh, energies are, not just the sun located in Scorpio. But from the 8th to the 21st, the sun in Libra is forging quite a sharp right angle with not just uh, Mars and that Mars-Pluto square, but also Saturn and Jupiter. So one of the things I would say to you is that if you are cogitating on something and thinking about something, don't show your hand too early. Now you may say, Patrick, when would I? I'm a Scorpio. You know, you are very shrewd ordinarily in these situations. But if there are conversations going on, perhaps of a confidential nature, perhaps because you're in a job but you want to move somewhere else and you don't want your current employer to know what you're thinking about, these conversations could leave you a little bit stressed out. I can only be truthful about that. So get some early nights where you can. And if Venus does give you the urge to go out and play sometimes, which would be lovely if it's possible in your particular locality to do with COVID restrictions, then all well and good. But on the 14th, Mercury does officially go into retrograde. Now, it's actually going to reverse into uh, Libra on the 28th, and it won't come out of shadow until the 19th of November. So if there is a big project or idea or strand that you're trying to get momentum around, just see that timeline as the middle of November, when I think things will start to crystallise much more favourably. Now there is a new moon that occurs on the 16th, but this is in your 12th solar house. And 12th solar house new moons are probably the most challenging ones of the whole year. I can only be truthful about it. So I think, again, it's this stuff about what you're doing quietly or confidentially. But then someone might may be doing something quietly and confidentially about you and may not be telling you completely about what's on their mind. I'm not trying to breed any sense of suspicion or anxiety. I'm just asking you to call upon your natural reserves of wisdom because you are one of the shrewdest zodiac signs, quite frankly. And I just feel that you might not necessarily see everything in front of you that you have to deal with during this period of the month. But wonderfully, from the 18th through to the 24th, Venus forges a glorious link with those three. Uh, planets in the sign of Capricorn and you could actually have conversations that are hugely reassuring and if you meet somebody new this could be a point when you really start to feel quite excited about the prospects. The 23rd sees the sun move into your sign that's really a champagne moment. If you don't drink it's an elderflower, elderflower cordial moment but it's one to celebrate because your energy is going to pick up you're going to feel less frustrated, things will flow more. It is true on the 28th that Mercury reverses, inverts, inverts into your 12th house, and that plan may really seem to have slowed down. But Venus also moves into your 12th house at that point too. So if there is something that you need to carefully cogitate about and reflect upon, that's going to be a fine opportunity to do it. But I think your physical drive and energy are going to be so much more improved that's going to see you much more up for any life challenges or to capitalize on any opportunities now as this month draws to a close we have two very very exciting events the first of course is the blue moon on the 31st in your sector of relationships and because that's conjunct uranus if you do have a connection with someone new, oh my word, your pulse really could be racing. But it can come in quick and almost unexpectedly. And even if you are someone who's you know, a little bit cautious about diving into situations, maybe there is a, a point here where you should just go with it. But equally, of course, your honest can be about freedom. So if that Venus location in your 12th house is making you more doubtful of where 
you should be involved with someone. Perhaps the tyre has been bumping along the bottom. Then I think that the fact that Mercury squares with Saturn the last four days of this month could point towards some quite heartfelt conversations. But if someone does leave your world, I don't think it's going to be anyone who's truly right for you. And I know that separations are not as easy as just saying those words. And a whole process has to be gone through in terms of dealing with the grief of a parting, especially if it's a relationship you've been attached to for many years or many months. But just giving you that hope, remember your sign is really the rule of transformations. And I feel that you don't make changes easily. They only come about when it really has got to the point where you've given absolutely everything of yourself. No one could be more committed than a, a Scorpio. So a separation will only occur if it's with your total approval, I feel. So see it philosophically. And with uh, Uranus on top of that moon, it could bring someone into your world, whether it's a friendship, whether it's a new business association or partnership or a love relationship. See the opportunity for excitement. Uh, and even if sometimes bringing things to a close is a painful transition, it is part of life. But after every ending, there is that wonderful, new, exciting dawn. And if you're attached, perhaps, to someone you're not even any longer with, the combination with Uranus and the Moon is a great opportunity to cut the ties, finally, and fly free. Um, do you remember Jonathan Cainer very fa famously uh, said that Scorpio wasn't ruled by the Scorpion? caused quite a fury. Uh, but I think he said that, uh, that Scorpio was ruled by the eagle. And uh, a lot of people push back against that, bless him. But the point is true. You know, when things come to a close, you can have an opportunity to deal with the whole process so much better than others because you feel it so deeply and then you can obtain your liberation. So exciting possibilities for this month. Take good care, stay safe and goodbye for now.